I invite you to stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Um, what a joy and a gift it is to be able to uh, celebrate Christmas with you. Um, a virtual front pew is what we've got going on right now. And just, I hope my prayer is not only that um, right now, wherever you're at, uh, you might be alone in your home. You might be, you might be with family, hopefully. Um, but regardless of where you are, or regardless of who you are with, uh, we know this about uh, celebrating Mass. We know this about celebrating the Mass of Christmas is that the Lord is truly present. In fact, that is the whole point of Christmas is that here is God who is Emmanuel, who is God with us. That the, the letter, or not the letter, the Gospel of St. John says that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling with us. He tabernacled with us. And so right now, even if you are alone, and even if this is one of the more, more disappointing or depressing Christmases you've ever experienced, or even if this is a great Christmas where you get to be with family, you get to be with your friends, know that the Lord is with you. Know that right now in this place, here is our God who has become flesh and is dwelling among us right now. And so we approach him with um, our, our hearts we, and we give him our gifts. One of the things that we recognize right in Christmas is that here are the Magi who bring their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, we give our best to the Lord, but we also tonight, Today, wherever you're at with Mass, we give our worst to the Lord. We give him the brokenness in our lives. We give him the areas of our hearts that we're not proud of, knowing that he, the Word made flesh, knowing that he, the infant in the manger, and the man on the cross, can give us new life. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to see him face to face confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight, and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. 
As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And, a, and as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me, I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matthan. Matthan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile is 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. 
when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to have a seat. So again, Merry Christmas, and uh, what a gift to be able to, I don't know, just there's so many things around Christmas that are, I love Christmas movies, I don't know, I, I want to ask, like, I don't know, if you are in your home right now, or wherever you're at, um, just what your favorite Christmas movie is, because there are so many to choose from, there are the classics, right, there on 34th Street, there's like the original White Christmas, there's It's a Wonderful Life, you have um, Christmas Carol, you have the Claymation Rudolph Frosty, you know about the list. And also the newer classics, right? You have um, Christmas Vacation, which is a great one. The Grinch. You have Elf. Um, of course, I don't know. There's none other, the newer Christmas classic than Christmas Story. The story of Ralph. Change my rifle with the compass and the stock and this thing this all the time. That's all he wants. And everyone keeps warning him that he's going to shoot his eye out. So there's a lot to choose from when it comes to Christmas movies. But I, I would say that... Here in 2020, my favorite Christmas movie of all time, possibly, is the movie Taken. If, if you've seen that movie, it's, it's Taken with Liam Neeson. It's a story of like he, Liam Neeson plays this ex-CIA operative um, whose 17-year-old daughter is on vacation in France, and she gets abducted. She gets sold into human trafficking, and then he has this very particular set of skills that he wants to do something about this. That, that I think, is probably hands down my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Um, we'll get back to that in just a second. Um, but I'm thinking about, we, so in, in your church, maybe in your home right now, and here in the chapel, we have a manger, right? We have the manger scene. And I always think, of this when it, look, if you have a nativity scene, look over at the image of Jesus in the manger. I want you to ask one question. I want to ask you one question. And the question is, Jesus in the manger. What's he doing there? Like, not just like, oh, he's frozen in that midair. Like, no, like, what's Jesus in the manger? What's he doing there? Like originally, 2,000, 2000 years ago, here is God himself, God incarnate as a baby, newborn baby, and he's lying in a manger. The question is, what's he doing? What's he doing there? It could be like our answer to that is like, I don't know, a, a peace on earth or goodwill to men, right? That's how the angel said it. Like, yes, that's how the angel said it. And yes, that's how the song goes. But <laughs> I think um, that's, not the, that's not the right answer, right? What's he doing there? I think a lot of us, if we had to answer that question, we'd just say, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. You know, recently I was looking up, um, I, I really, I go in these waves of getting uh, kind of preoccupied or obsessed with uh, World War II. And it was about World War II. And so I was looking through these books and through these photos of D-Day. Images of these young men from the United States, soldiers, who were part of the 101st Airborne Division. And there they are on their troop transport, getting ready to, to parachute into the invasion of Normandy. And looked at this, this photo, he was young, no older than our students, probably even maybe some of them be younger than our students. And if you were to ask the question, see that image of that young man, the young man, 101st Airborne Division, about, about to drop into Normandy, you ask the question, what's he doing there? You would have a very, very, very clear answer. He is there to fight. Like he is there to liberate Europe from a tyrant and an oppressive regime. Like that's why he was there. We'd be so clear, razor, laser clear on why he was there. And so this, you know, I was challenged to ask this question, what's Jesus, what's he doing there in the by a brother priest of mine, his name is Father John. And Father John keeps asking this question, like, what was he doing there? And I think a lot of times when it comes to our answer to the, what, what's he doing there, we don't have a clear answer because, like, we're kind of muddy on our story. We're kind of muddy on, like, what's going on right now. We're kind of muddy on where we are. And I think because we're so muddy, this whole pandemic stuff has taken so many people by surprise. Um, 
And so many people, I think because we're so muddy on our story, that's why so many people live in fear. We thought we were in a safe world. We thought we were in a comfortable, we thought we were in a world that was good. But when we remember the beginning of the story, like the beginning of everything, we realize something really powerful. Yes, this world is good. I think, you know, if you were with us last over the course of Lent, we spent a lot of time, in fact, the whole season of Lent, talking about the fact that God made this world good. Right? That, that, that um, in the scriptures, Genesis 1 says, as, as when God makes more stuff, it continues to be even better. Like, he just, this is good, and this is good. The whole thing, he says, is very, very good. And he makes us, right, human beings, in his image and likeness. Basically, God's saying, I want to make a being that's like me. <laughs> that you've been made like God. Why? Because God's saying, like, I, I want them to be like me. I want them to share in my love. I want them to share in my joy. I want them to share in my life. I want them to share in my abundance. And then he does it. And then we broke the world. So God gives us this incredible world, and then we break it. And we broke that relationship. And we broke our hearts into a thousand pieces by saying this essential thing that we all say, God, I know what you want, but I want what I want. This is the essence of every sin. It was the essence of the sin of every I know what you want, but I want what I want. And because of that, we broke the world, we broke the relationship, we broke our hearts, and then we sold ourselves into slavery. That's what happened. As a result, we're good, but we're broken. As a result of this, we're good, but we're bound. We're enslaved, we're anxious, and we're joyless, and we're afraid, and we're purposeless, and we feel abandoned, and we feel fatherless because we've been taken. That's, that's what happened. You've been taken. In that, in that movie, which, by the way, is a horrible movie. Like, do not just, like, after mass, like, pop it in and watch it while you're opening presents. That would not be a family film. Um, it's powerful. It's a difficult scene. One of the most difficult scenes is when here is the father. He knows that his daughter is, his daughter who has gone off where he did not want her to go. He knows that she'll be found by the enemy. And he says these words to her. He says, now this next part is very important. They are going to take you. But you need to stay focused. Then he gives her instructions on what she needs to do. You know, Genesis chapter 3 is very similar. After we broke the world, after we broke our hearts, after we sold ourselves into slavery, here's God the Father who says, okay, this is very important. Here's what's going to happen. Childbirth is going to be painful, and relationships will be broken, and uh, you'll be, you're going to be tempted to use and to dominate and to manipulate each other in your relationships, and uh, it's going to feel like slavery. This is what's going to happen. But to the serpent, it's so interesting, to the serpent, he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head. This is so reminiscent of the scene where uh, uh, Liam Neeson, his character, the father, says, um, you have a very particular set of skills, and if you do not give my child back, I will hunt you down, I will find you, I will destroy you. Because here's a dad who will stop at nothing. Here's our God who will not stop. Question, Jesus in the manger, what's he doing there? He is declaring war. That's what he's doing. Christmas is an act of war. You've been taken. You've been afraid. You've been purposeless. You've been abandoned. But you are not fatherless. Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, he had a poem. He has a poem about, uh, about Christmas, about this day, about this moment. And one of the lines in that poem is so powerful. It says, this is the moment when the sword leapt from its sheath. Because God wants his world back. And God wants his kids back. Isaiah 45 says, I will fight with those who have fought with you. I will contend with those who contend with you. So question, what's he doing there? He's saying, I'm here. He's saying, I'm here to fight. He's saying, I'm here to fight for you. He's saying, you are not fatherless. You are not abandoned. You are not worthless. That, that's one of the prices, right? That we, we feel abandoned, we feel fatherless, we feel worthless. And that's why, just, gosh, so many Christmas songs are so good, Oh Holy Night. 
Tis long lay the world in sin and error pining, like just broken. Here we are, uh, bound. And it says, but he appeared, and the soul felt its worth. This, what's he doing here? What's he doing? This is, this is rescue. This is him fighting. You know, it's interesting, before this moment in history, before the incarnation, before Christmas, before the nativity, all we had, all the human race had was white flags. Before this moment in history, all we had was white flags. We could not fight back. We couldn't resist. We were bound. And the Bible even clarifies this. The Bible clarifies that before Christ, everyone, well, even after Christ, everyone's born. We're all born belonging to the evil one. I don't know if you know that, but every human being born is born under his dominion, over under the dominion of the saint, of Satan, under the dominion of under his possession. We live in the we're born into the kingdom of darkness. Yeah, we're good, but we're enslaved. We're good, but we're bound. That's one of the reasons why in the rite of baptism, uh, the one of the initial rites in the rite of baptism, rite of exorcism where the priest or deacon or bishop, whoever it is, says, declares over this child in the name of Jesus, like, no, you're being transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Lord himself. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> We're talking about the devil on Christmas? Why not? I was talking about taken. I guess might as well keep going. Um, there's, a, there's a priest who has a PhD in exorcism, which he's the only person in the entire history of the world to get a PhD in exorcism. And one of the things he researched was the rise of exorcisms recently. Now, he said he's read everything there is ever written about exorcism. And he said in the early church, and as Christianity expanded, there were exorcisms all over the place. Because why? Because the world belonged to the Satan. He said, but something happened when Christendom was reigning. Essentially, when there was Christendom, everyone was being baptized. He said, like almost except for in mission territories. Because if everyone's getting baptized, immediately they're being brought into the kingdom of the Lord right away. He said, it's going to rise now. People are in exorcisms because people aren't baptizing their children anymore. And so, so many of our brothers and sisters in the human race are living enslaved. So many of our brothers and sisters in the human race are, are still good, but they're bound. Like, the, the gift of baptism, the gift of being transferred, the gift of being rescued, is uh, Father John, also, he shared this. Example. He, it's, a, it's an example he got from a Baptist pastor who was talking about like, the power of baptism. And he said, imagine, imagine growing up in a home that was so broken. Maybe some of you know exactly what this is all about. Maybe some of you are in the midst of it right now. Where um, it's a horrible family. Where no one loves and no one is loved. Where you're, all you know, all the child knows, all you know, what has been to be neglected, to be ignored, to be used, to be abused. Um, and next door, there's this family, and you, you see them all the time. They're out in the front yard, and there's this dad of this family who works with his kids. They do projects in the backyard, catch in the front yard. And you, just, you can hear them at night through your window, laughter on the kitchen table. Imagine. One day, there's a knock at the door, and you open it, and there's the dad. And he says, I want to know if you would like to come and live with me and my family. You will never have to come back here. He says, you wouldn't even pack. You'd just go. To be able to have that truth of like, I've seen how you love your kids. And you want me to be one of them. That, that's what... That's what he's doing there. He came to take us home, to fight for us. He's declaring war on everything that enslaves. That's what he was doing there. Last thing. Another question. What is he doing here now? What's he doing here? Because Jesus Christ is truly present still. Yes, he was in the manger in Bethlehem. 
He is in every tabernacle, in every Catholic church around the world. What is he doing here? Uh, well, this is not a past event. He is declaring that you are still worth fighting for. That he's declaring that you are still worth choosing now. He's declaring that you have been attacked and you have been anxious and you have been afraid and you have been taken, but God has not given up and he will never give up. That's why he's still here. To fight for you now, no matter what kind of mess your life is, that's why he's here now, to fight for you now. And maybe that's why you're here now. Maybe that's why you're here right now, because you forgot or because you never knew that there is a God who fights for you, who has declared war for you, and who has come for you to take you home. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith in the one who fights for us. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For us sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are confident in his love and we're confident of his fighting for us, and so now we are confidently approaching him with all of our needs. That the church may joyfully proclaim the birth of our Savior and transform the world through word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That bishops, priests, and deacons who guide God's people may be faithful heralds of the good news of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are away from their loved ones today may be filled with Christmas peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. That Christmas, that Christ, born as our Savior, may save those yet unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all families may welcome the Christ child into their home and experience his blessings and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who grieve for their departed loved ones may be consoled by the promise of joy that our Lord Jesus Christ offers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the grace this Christmas to know why Jesus was in the manger and to live in the freedom of having been fought for, having been rescued, and having been restored. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to offer up our prayers by praying for vocations, both in our diocese as well as in yours. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we make this transition from the liturgy of the word to the liturgy of the Eucharist, uh, we go from re receiving and being receptive to the Lord's word to, to 
being very active and offering up the Word made flesh to the Father. Um, this preparation of the gifts and presentation of the gifts, this offertory time, usually in your church, you know this, is marked by a collection. And so my, just, my invitation is, uh, you probably already ver are very, very aware of the needs of people around you. Um, so, our, or maybe even your local, your local, your local parish. We have been so blessed by our uh, virtual front pew and you have just helped us so much. Um, they just want to invite you, uh, if the Lord has placed your local parish on your heart or place any family member or neighbor or someone in your life on your heart uh, to make a resolution at this point. If you can't reach out right now to offer them, to offer them support, I just invite you to make a resolution right now. Um, how are you going to, to respond to the love? You know, we respond with love to love and you've been loved. And how, how are you called now to give those to those people next to you, to give to the, your local parish um, and to love those who are in need? I invite you to make that resolution as we prepare the gifts that we're about to offer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see the salvation of our God. Isaiah 40, verse 5. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a couple quick announcements. One is that we will be back on Sunday morning uh, for the Feast of the Holy Family. And so have a great Christmas and blessed Christmas. I want to thank, obviously, our missionaries who stayed a little extra to be able to help us and serve at, at this Mass for Christmas for you all, as well as Maria, who did double duty, both reading and singing, and Natalie, who's hung out here, not a missionary, but a senior and awesome piano player and singer, um, and as well as like everybody. Uh, just it's such a great gift. Uh, thank you for our being our virtual front pew on uh, celebrate Christmas with you all. I know that in the chat probably right right now. You're like, hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. That's awesome. I'm so grateful for that. Also, someone told me I was like a little harsh last weekend, apparently, um, with like, careful what you're saying in the chat. And they were like, actually, it was pretty good. It's like, okay, well, never mind then. I don't, <laughs> I'm doing this while you're doing that. So anyways, um, so grateful, so grateful. Uh, and Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, please know that we, uh, even though we don't see you, we are definitely 100% praying with you and for you. In fact, we're offering up the sacrifice of the Mass for you as well. That's the intention of our hearts and the intention of this entire prayer is for you who are praying with us. So we continue our prayer. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke you can we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Angels, we have heard.